So today we'll continue on the sixth commandment. Last week we ended the um, the fifth one, which is honor due to parents. So today we shall continue on the, the sixth one. Even though the first and the fifth one add about eleven series that you can find on our website. As you go through it, just click on Ten Commandments, and the whole series are embedded in that one click. But you have to listen to each of them to the end before you can the other one can come up. Or better still, just go to YouTube, put my name there, write my name on YouTube, and then you see uh, the whole list coming out. And I pray God will help us that will not just be listeners of His words alone will be doers of these same words in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are still on the Ten Commandments, and today we are going into commandment number six, which is the twelfth of our series. I think so. If I'm not making a mistake, yes, I think it should be the twelfth of our series. Exodus chapter 20, it's just one verse, verse 13. The Bible says, Thou shalt not Kill. What did I say? Thou shalt not kill. Very important. Let us pray. Father, speak to us again. Grant us an understanding heart. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. We want to see you. Have your way in our midst. Speak to as many who are tuning in this moment. Transform their lives transform our lives. Mm -hmm. Let your name at the end of today's discussion, message, your name be glorified. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thou shalt not kill. In other words, in our present time, we call killing can also be seen as what we call murder. 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 That murder or murder. It sounds like like mother. So a mother. Mother, not mother. Mother. Anyone? Amen. So killing is similar to murder. It's killing somebody. You know what it means when you say you kill somebody? You understand? It means you strangle life after the person. It means you sent the person to grave. It means you 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 either send the person very early to to, to the to, to hell or you send the person very early to uh, paradise, the kingdom of God. Whatever you do, either you are trying to help somebody to to get to the kingdom of God quickly, or you try to help somebody to get to you try to help somebody to get to hell so quickly. All you have done is what you have killed. But we are going to analyze this type of murder because there are some that are not necessarily. We cannot term them as. In, the, in, in, in light of what we are trying to say today as murder, we, can, we will term them in a different way. Because in that aspect, the, 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 the Bible said, if you kill human being, you also you will be what? You will be killed. That's what the Bible said. And also, you are going to see that even the government of a nation, some nations still observe it, when you kill somebody, when the, the hand of the law gets on you, and you are found guilty, some nation, they do what? They kill you. Because you kill somebody, you don't have the right to take somebody's life. But because you have taken somebody's life, some nations today, they do what? They will also take your life. And when a nation, listen to me, when a government decides to take your life, you can't say that government has murdered you. Life is precious as far as God is concerned. Life is precious. Life is sacred. As far as God is concerned. Life is sacred. You see, even, even the life of a murderer, Somebody who murders. I mean, in times of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ came to make us to understand that this time around, it is not only when you, it is not only when you, you strike somebody dead that you have murdered the person. Jesus Christ said that if you hate your brother, if you hate your brother without any reason, you are also what? You are a murderer. Now, let, 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 let. I, I want to read some of these passages. I'll read them now because I've just been saying them. 
but I want to read them one by one. Number one, I said, life is what? Sacred. As far as God is concerned. You don't take somebody's life. You have no right to do what? To take somebody's life. Because if you do that, you are now going against what the Lord said in Exodus. Don't forget, as I said over and over again, Exodus chapter 20 was the direct sound of the voice of God to the Israelites. Genesis chapter 9, open your Bible. Genesis chapter 9, I'm going to read here verse 6. The Bible says, Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. He said, if you, are, if you kill any man, you also be what? You be killed. Because that life is precious. Such a person he is created in the image of God. Whose right do you have? God did not give you the permission to kill such a person. Are you listening to me? Now, that is one. And then, as I said, that even a murderer, a murderer's life is precious in the sight of God. In the book of Genesis chapter 4, if you read about Cain killing Abel, and God decided to curse the ground, God did not curse Cain. Though God said you are going to be a wanderer, you are going to move from one place to the other, and this ground you are tilling will be difficult for you to get food out of it. You will sweat very well, though he told it to the parents, to Adam. And so he's telling it to Cain again. And Cain said, look, this, your pun this punishment you are giving me is too much for me. Anyone that's sinning is going to kill me. No, God said, no way. Nobody will see. Anybody that kills Cain, and make sure I deal with that person. Genesis chapter 4. Let us see Genesis chapter 4, verse 15. That's what the Lord said. Cain killed his brother Abel. Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. Verse 15, and the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Can you see that? If you kill him. Because God does not really desire that anybody should die. That's what Peter said. It is not the will of God that any should walk, perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's why God is saying, Thou shalt not kill. So don't keep any reason, don't keep people. And as I said, Jesus Christ said, when people say, hey, I have not killed anybody. I have not killed anybody. If I ask now, have you killed uh, me? I have not to. Hey, I have not. But listen to what Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Jesus Christ is trying to make something clear here. Because some of us, we have murdered unknowingly. And if you realize that now, I want you to do what? To change. To do what? To change. We need to change. So in Matthew, in Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, are you there? Matthew chapter 5. Some people are not opening the Bible, they are so slow. Have you opened? Okay. Now, I'm going to read verse 21. Just listening. Matthew 5, I'm going to read verse 21. The Bible says, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill. Is that what I read? Thou shalt not kill. I read it from the book of Exodus. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Jesus Christ now was now going into the book of Le Leviticus. But to say, But I say unto you, That whosoever is angry with his brother, Are you listening to me? Whosoever is angry with his brother, Without a cause, for no reason. The person has done you nothing. That Jesus Christ is saying, shall be in danger of the judgment. In other words, you that is angry with your brother, just as somebody who have killed, who is subject, who is in danger of judgment. So you also that is angry with your brother without any reason, you are also going to face that same what? Judgment. You are also going to face that same danger of judgment. And in other words, that same, that same um, 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 consequence of somebody who kill, you are also what guilty of it. That was just Christ trying to say in essence. So, if you are angry for no reason, you are also linked to somebody the Bible can call a murderer. Are you listening to me? I'm just trying to make you to understand what anger can do. And so Jesus Christ doesn't want you to go to that length. 
Jesus Christ is trying to say, when you get it without any reason, when you get it without what? Any reason, when you become angry without any reason, you are already tagged as a murderer because if it's not taken care of, you will go beyond that again, which is not good. And also hatred, hating people for no reason, for no cause. Now let us see the book of First John, First John chapter 3, I'll read verse 15. Are you there? 3.15 says, listen to me, he said, whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. Clear. Whosoever hated his brother is what? Is a murderer. You have no reason to hate anybody. You learn to do what? To love. We sang the song, Joyful, Joyful, we adore thee. Lord, in one of the verses, the verses said, Teach us to what? To love each other. Teach us to love each other because you are God of love. Teach us to love each each other. And Jesus Christ said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciple if you have love one for another. Love. So if you have hatred, the Bible has already confirmed you as a murderer. Do you hate somebody? No, you have not killed the person. You didn't murder the I mean, you didn't strike the person dead. You didn't strangle out of the person. But the mere fact that you hated the person you are a murderer. Do you know why the Bible says you are a murderer? Because hatred, when you hate somebody, anytime you see the person, you'll be angry. Anger comes into it. Are you listening to me? And when anger comes into that hatred, you can do anything. I don't want to see this man again. I don't want to see this boy or this girl again in my present. You can do what? Kill that person. So, the first step, if you take a first step, Towards murdering somebody, which is hatred, you're already termed as a murderer. As if you realize that, that, ah, because I hate the person, I'm a murderer, what will you do? Change your ways. Do what? Repent from that act. And as I said, also that there are some, there are some killing cases, I would say, that are not necessarily murder. That what I, I, I was explaining about the government. By the government of a nation trying to send somebody to death. Though many nations don't do that today. Or let, let me say some nations don't do Let me not say many. Don't do that today. But if they do, it does not mean they are guilty. But if they continue to kill their people for no reason, that's when they become guilty. In Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. Turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 13. Romans 13. I want to read here verses 1. He said, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God, the power that be ordained of God. Is the power in your country ordained by God? Verse 4 says, for he is the meaning. Okay, let me read down. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Verse 3, for rulers are not a terror to good works. Are you listening? But to the evil. Without then not be afraid of the power, do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For says, For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. That is the government, the ruler, a leader. When you do something that is evil, when you go against the rule of the nation, and if what they have decided that what this, this man has done, you don't kill people anyhow. If they say, okay, you don't kill people anyhow. You don't do what? You don't kill people anyhow. In this country, you don't kill. If you kill, you'll be killed. And you decide to go and do what? You decide to go and do what? Kill somebody. If a nation declares that, and you go and do that, and when that nation decides, when the government comes to say, oh, okay, what did we put in our constitution? They say, any man that kills a man, or a woman, or a boy, should be what? Killed. Okay. So, my friend, did you kill your friend? Ah, I did not kill him. Okay, you didn't kill him. That's fine. And then they will join the case, investigate, investigate, and then it's called that you are guilty. If you are guilty, the government will say, well, my friend, you are guilty, and our constitution says you'll be killed. And they will go and kill that person. And you will not say, ah, that country has murdered the man. They didn't murder the man. No. 
they have the right to do that because the man has taken life. And the Bible says, you see, most of these nations we are leading, hey, most of most of the, the leadership, that's what the Bible talked about, that they are ordained by God. Most of the principles that these nations are using are scriptural. Most of them, they are from the Bible. That is why Jesus is calling every nation to come to God. Every nation to repent, to come to God. You are doing what the Bible is saying, but you are not following the one that gave the instruction. It is very wrong. Jesus is the only way that will lead you to the kingdom of God. Now, according to the law of Moses, also in the book of Leviticus, let me read Leviticus, Leviticus chapter, even Moses said it too, Leviticus, don't forget, Exodus was before Leviticus, God has given them the commandment, God has done what? Given them the commandment. And in Genesis, even before God gave the commandment in Genesis, God said, if you take a life, your, your own life will be taken. And then God not gave them a commandment, thou shalt not kill. So I want you to understand something. God is not contradicting himself. That in Genesis chapter, chapter 9 verse 6 where we read, he said, if you shed blood by blood, will your life be shed? I get what I mean. And even though before then, uh, uh, Cain killed the brother, but God did not allow Cain to be killed. But going further again, God not came. That if you do this, you'll be killed. Now, in the book of Exodus, God is not giving them instruction that you should not kill. Because God discovered the heart of man that these people are just killing themselves. It's not good for you to do that. You understand? God is a, he, 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 a merciful and a patient God. But now, when this act continues, now, don't forget, Moses now came, trying to interpret what the Lord, the Lord is trying to say here in Leviticus, because they were just killing themselves anyhow. In Leviticus 24, let me read. Leviticus 24, I'm going to read here verse 17. Now follow me. It says, He that killeth any man shall surely be put to death. Period. Confirming Exodus chapter 20 that we have just read and then um, Genesis chapter 9. If you kill any man, Exodus 20, 13 and then Genesis chapter 9 verse 6. And if you go to the book of Numbers, though that one is very long, the book of Numbers, Numbers chapter 35. Turn about to Numbers chapter 35. Let me read from verse um, 16, but I will jump. He says, And if he smite him with an instrument of fire so that he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Let me just stop there. The murderer, so if you read the whole passage, you understand what he's trying to say. Talking about the city of refuge. Even though you kill, you, in, in, in those days, if you, the, 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 the government is saying, when you kill somebody unawares, you did not know, you understand, mistakenly, Maybe you just, eh? Uh huh. Maybe mistakenly you, you, you carried a very big armor and then somebody was standing behind you. You know, they just turned like this and they think just eat the person in a very bad place. Bam! The person just fall on the floor. And you don't know what to, you don't know the sim simple first aid to get the person up. As far as the person remained that unconscious situation for so long, I don't know how many hours the doctors can tell us what will happen, the person will die. Now you did not know. Understand? Because you are standing behind, you carry the stick or you carry something, and you mistakenly, or maybe you the thing, mistakenly drop on the person. They term it today as manslaughter. Yes, manslaughter. Now, in, in, in the Bible days, the Bible says you should run. There's a city called the city of refuge. Run to that city. Because the avenger of God, the person that will execute judgment on you, will be running after you. When you get into the city of refuge, you are safe there. But if you read it down, he said, if you kill the person purposely, you do what? You kill the person, you run to the city of refuge, no way. Even if you get, they will bring you out and do what? And they will kill you. They will bring you out and they will kill you. You can't escape. He said, but if he trust him of hatred, verse 20 now, Exodus chapter 35 verse 20, but if he trust him of hatred and haul at him by lane of weight that he died, or in enmity smite him with his hand, and he die. He that smote him shall surely be put to death, for he is a murderer. The revenger of blood shall slay the murderer when he meted him. Must slay him when he meted him. I pray God will help us who will not be murderers in Jesus' name. Amen. If you don't want to be murderer, don't hate people. If you don't want to be murderer, don't do what? Don't hate people. And then somebody was asking me when I went for uh, when I went for uh, for, for um, evangelism. For telling me, what about this one that uh, uh, this country is going? They're just killing people anyhow, this and that. If the government of a nation, as I said, is killing for no reason, killing its own people, that government is not doing what is right. 
But if another country decides to invade another country, and that other country decides to defend themselves, decide to do what? Defend themselves. Another country coming now to invade your nation. And they are coming, and you decide to defend yourself. As far as they can, if you invade another nation, and that nation uh, overpowers you, you understand? You understand what I'm trying to say? Just as Israel is, is trying to overpower many nations today, does not mean Idris are killers. They are not killers. So when you go for war, war is not killing. The people will not believe that. But it's not killing when you go for war. Because when, they, when Israel went for war, the Bible said one time, Moses' hand was raised. When Moses' hand was raised, the people got victory. When Moses' hand come down, the enemy fought against Israel and they defeated him. And even when Samuel was, 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 when Samuel was, uh, was in power, Samuel, a prophet of God, I mean, and the, the, is it the Philistine that came to invade Israel? Let's look at the book of 1 Samuel. Let me read 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel. Are you there? 1 Samuel chapter 1. I'm going to read here. I think it's verse 1 Samuel. Sorry, 1 Samuel chapter 15. 1 Samuel chapter 15. Let me read verses 1 to 3. Look at what the Bible said. It says, Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Verse 2. Thus said the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel. I he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Israel. Verse, verse 3. Now listen. He said, Now go. Who is being destruction? God gave Samuel the destruction to give to Israel. He said, Now go and smite Amalek and not only destroy all that they have, they have and spare them not. But slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Suppose say God is a murderer for ordering that. No, it's not. Oh. It's not. If you kill, you'll be killed. For no reason. Israel was just going on their own. These people just came out to do what? To kill them. Start killing them. Ah. You are fighting a nation. If that nation is stronger, the nation do what? Will retaliate. And when they retaliate and you say they are murdering you, they are not to. You look for their trouble. Why not make peace with them so that peace will reign? So, I've talked about accidental, accidental killing, killings and so on and so forth. And then, finally, let me just end with this one. There's, there's, there's another way of way that people call murder. I want, I want to read it before I, 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 I want you to, 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 to understand it. In the book of Exodus chapter 22, Verse 2 to 3. Mm -hmm. Now listen, you know, listen. The Bible said, If a thief be found breaking up and be smitten that he die, there shall no blood be shed for him. If the sun be risen upon him, the blood shed for him. For he would make full restitution, and if he had nothing, then he shall be sold for his death. There are two things there. But I want to pick on the first one. You go into somebody's house, you break into the person's house. You put gun in the person's head. Now listen to me. And you say, bring everything, bring your khaki, bring everything you have, put you down. And the person mistakenly, I will like, let me use that word, mistakenly overpowered the, the thief <laughs> and collected the gun and he shot himself. Today they will call it what? Defensive killing. He did not intend to kill him. He wanted to trust in him. But that was how I will kill you. And then the guy had to defend himself. I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not ready to die now. And then he start struggling. And then the person you came to his side decided to finish the life of that, of that criminal. It's not a defensive killing. That's what the Bible is saying. No blood shall be shed with him. Because it's what? He or she is what? A thief. Thief came to your house to break him. So, I want us to understand when the Bible says, Thou shalt not kill. That's what I've been trying to analyze. Various ones. Thou shalt not kill. If you ate, you have killed. And there are some killings today that are not in line with what the Lord is saying. What the Lord is saying is unprovoked anger. On what? Unprovoked anger. For no reason. 
You don't want to take life out of people. That is what the Lord is saying. But there are certain things that the Lord said, if you do it, then this part of the law is not, God is not contradicting himself. The, the, the scripture is balanced. God is not willing anybody should die. So because of that, do what? Love yourself. Why will you be killing people? Why will you be going and murdering people? Love people. Live in peace with them. You understand? Let them be your friend. They are your neighbors. Be friends to them. Don't terminate their life. But if you do, the hands of the Lord will get you. When the hands of the Lord gets you, in scriptural times, when the hands of the Lord gets you, you that have killed, under provoke anger, you'll be killed. Sorry for that scriptures. And I pray God will help us. Brothers will understand that his word that will not be found guilty of any of these. In Jesus' name. Let us pray. You have heard the word of God. You are there listening to me. You hated somebody. The Bible said you are a murderer for hating somebody. Pray that the Lord will help you not to hate people. Many to be, even you minister of the gospel, hearing me now. You hated somebody for no reason. I know people are going to ask me questions. If you have questions to ask, please ask your questions. So the email address is there, pastor at truebelieversbaptistchurch.org. I will try through the scripture to give you answers to your questions. But if you are hating somebody or you hated somebody for no reason, you may ask, what if I hate somebody? If I have reason to hate somebody, bring the question and we answer it. There's no time now to give you that answer. If there's reason, I have a reason for hating this person. Am I still a murderer? Send your question and we answer it. If you do not send it, then I will leave it for you to go and sign the scripture yourself. But if you are listening to me, you are not giving your life to Christ. In short, your own here. You are not even a murderer. You are not even just a murderer. You are a murderer. You are an adulterer. You are this. You are, in short, you are against the old commandment of God for not giving your life to Christ. You are already against it. So you need Jesus. Tell the Lord Jesus to come into your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, today I am against your commandment. But today, I mean, I've been against your commandment. But today I repent. Please forgive me my sins. I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. Write my name in the book of life. In Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer, go to a Bible believing church, study the Word of God. Send me email and let us discuss together. God bless you, Regal, in Jesus' name.